All right, hello again, class. Uh, the circuit I have drawn in this video, uh, you can see behind me here on that piece of paper there, it is the, uh, the hand-off auto float switch circuit uh, that you see in your textbooks. And uh, typically that is if we wanted a pump to be running uh, in an automatic state in case we were to leave it unattended, maybe to prevent a tank from overflowing, uh, we can utilize a float switch, okay, for that purpose. Um, and then uh, if we wanted to pump the, the, the pump manually, we could turn the selector switch to the hand position, and that would then allow the pump to run as long as we had that switch in that uh, scenario. So you can see on the drawing, in this particular circuit, we do not incorporate a stop push button, nor do we incorporate the two, three seal in contact. Uh, we would incorporate a float switch, but in this case, because our lab, we're not certainly gonna have a big tank of water in here with a float switch in there actually. So what we're gonna do instead of that is we're going to incorporate a limit switch. So this guy here. So I guess the first step for me would be to quickly meter this limit switch and make sure that we understand what the contacts do. So I'll do that, I've got my meter handy here. Okay, and all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna see if I can pick out the contacts, so when it's in this scenario, it's beeping, and if I close it like that, or move that, that limit switch, it opens up again, okay? Or we can go this way and click it like that, so that's the opposite. So these outside ones are the normally open, which I've labeled, and the inside ones are the normally closed. So I'm gonna need that up here. I'll pan the camera back up again now. So we can see what's happening. Okay, that's a bit better there. So we've got the limit switch behind me here, behind my head. Um, so now what we need to do, so the limit switch is the float switch. So we're gonna come out with our line one, and we're gonna head to the handoff auto switch. Okay, now they show one pivot point on this, but our switch internally, we need to feed both the hand and the auto side of it. So that's what I've just done over here, okay? Now we need to come out of the hand and we'll go straight to the coil. So the coil is connected up, if we recall, from the number three. There's that jumper there, pardon that beep there. So out of the hand push button, we can go directly to the three terminal, which feeds that coil directly. So remember, we're not using our two, three contact. And then out of the auto, we're gonna go to one side of the normally open float switch or limit switch connections and then we need to come out of the other side of the limit switch connection. Sorry, I'm just trying to find a wire long enough without getting too terribly long. We use one of these ones. Out of the other auto, whoops, hang on, I was in the normally closed there. Let's go normally opens. Okay, and we are then gonna go all the way over from here back to the coil. And last but not least, of course, we need to make sure that we have our neutral connected up so that our control circuit will work properly. So if I'm in the hand position, the minute I power up, I should be feeding the coil, so don't be alarmed if this thing automatically starts to run, which it does. I'll turn it to off, it stops. We'll go to auto, nothing is happening, and let's pretend this float, uh, this limit switch is the float, so the liquid's slowly, slowly, slowly filling up, and then it hits the point where it's actually gonna overflow. Now we're running again, okay? So we know that works. And uh, I'll hook up my power circuit so we can show that the motor actually functions and operates off of this like we've done in the past. Line one, line two, line three. And then we will come out with our T1, T2, T3 to our motor itself. That's this here, this here, and that there. Okay, so I'll just pan back a little bit again, like we've done before, so you can see the motor run. Okay, I'll turn my power circuit on. I'll turn my control circuit on. We're in the auto state, so the minute I hit the float switch, motor runs, let that go, motor stops, go over to hand, motor runs again off okay so that was the handoff auto selector switch using a limit switch instead of a float
And uh, that's the end of that lab, all right? We'll see you in the Learning Hub.